We have that situation taken care of and we're underway. So Manhattanville with a little bigger roster right now. And again, uh, it's been trying, I think, for athletic teams on both the NCAA level and the professional ranks and the high school levels right now to just get out there and compete. So Wilkes happy to compete in that shot there. The wrister is just off the mark. So a shot there by Nash. Here comes Kendall Castro and the Colonel trying to get forward. Abby Miller behind the net, but taking control there. Taylor Ham, five foot seven, at a uh, Socrates, New York, attended the Millbrook School. So Wilkes trying to get something going here on the offensive end as the puck meanders down behind the net here for Manhattanville. Ham trying to get forward now. She finally does. And she got a little two on two action. The Ham, beautiful job with the puck. But it is gobbled up over there by Addie Olsen. Face off Manhattanville. Takes care of that, and that goes off of one of the Colonel's pads. And now it'll be the Colonel's coming the other way, Emma Guzdick. So Guzdick sends it down. Amanda Bunchy is down there as well. And Gianna Manzi on the ice. Here comes the hustle, and Olsen takes care of that. Back at it. So Manhattanville sends the puck across. And just trying to see if they could get their stick on the puck right now. And it is knocked around. Still alive and a goal for Manhattanville. That puck just kind of stuck around a little too much. And here comes the happy young lady from Manhattanville, Charlotte Stanwood. Out of West Vancouver, British Columbia, five foot two. She's a sophomore on the finisher. We're back at it as one to nothing goes Manhattanville. So, you know, fatigue's going to be a factor here for the Colonels with the limited roster on the ice. Five players there on the bench. So hopefully Olsen doesn't have any trouble in net for the Colonels between today and tomorrow. So now here comes the reset button here for Manhattanville. And a shot goes high. Nice job. And now it's still alive here in the Colonels. We'll try to get it out of Dodge. So Feliciano with the shot there for Manhattanville. Not going to expect too many penalties here. I think they'll play smart hockey, both squads. Olsen there on the deflection in goal for the Colonels will head down the other side. shot goes down and it'll matriculate over to the Colonels. 16-11 on the clock. Colonels just trying to get out of their 
defensive zone here. And they'll hit it down and it'll go down behind the net. Janelle Austin is in goal out of Bethlehem, Connecticut for Manhattanville. Here come the Colonels. Trying to go forward and do something with that puck. Kendall Castro trying to get into beat Drewer down there, and she does. Anybody home yet? No, she couldn't get a stick on it to send it across, and now it'll keep coming momentum-wise for Manhattanville, and Nash steps in front. Now gets it forward over to her teammate. And Nash will head down to try to do something with it. away there by Olsen so they had a nice look at it was number nine Carrie Carr the senior out of New Hartford New York still in the Colonel zone 14:38 on the clock you can see a little bit of tiredness right now on the Colonels I'll try to Earl Utter will try to rotate his players the best he could here Trying to give him a little bit of a, a break where he could, but it's going to be some tired legs, and they got to come back and do it again tomorrow. Now, we're not sure will there, if there will be a couple more players tomorrow. Again, haven't talked to Coach Earl Utter, and again, some of the stuff, you know, ends up becoming, I don't want to say confidential, but, you know, these players could be dealing with some illness or what have you. That shot there for Manhattanville. Olsen gets rid of it. Nice job there. Good opportunity there by number 22, Ava Panzer at a Pauling, New York, who is a junior. So Manhattanville not in the conference for basketball or the other sports here in the Middle Atlantic Conference, but ice hockey-wise, they'll match up with the Colonels year to year how many programs there are with ice hockey here over on the women's side so in northeastern pennsylvania you know, kings has had a program wilkes has had a program that have competed in the middle atlantic conference so we get tied up in front of the goal 1307 is on the clock one nothing manhattanville leading Castro now coming out of it and Castro will head down and see if she could beat the Valiants back there and Puck still alive there Cookrin in the lineup here for the Colonels as well And another goal here for Manhattanville at the 12.06 mark. to get it forward again for Manhattanville. So the Colonels need to try to get some offense going, but at the same time, you like to see their defense 
going to try to stop it or defense for that matter when you talk hockey as that shot now will trickle down by Olsen she just got a glove on it and that one saved again by number 41 Addie Olsen the sophomore at in Naples Florida got a penalty coming up here this will send number 27 Bungie out of Warminster Pennsylvania to the penalty box so with a hook, 11.33 on the clock. So here's the power play for Manhattanville. Let's see what the Curdles could do here on the other end of the penalty kill. We'll send it across, get a look here. Quick brister over there, that one goes wide. That was Ham. Castro trying to defend over there against Ham. We'll send it down over to the corner. One twelve left here on the power play for Manhattanville. Here comes Wilkes. Abby Miller gets pickpocketed over here. And now good job there defensively for Wilkes by Claudia Cookren out of Northampton, Pennsylvania. So come across and get over towards Emma Goodstick. Guzdick, that is, out of Amherst, New York. Play for the Buffalo Regals. Ten minutes and ten seconds on the clock here in the first period at the Toyota Sportsplex for the Wilkes University Athletic Network and the John Mandola Show Network. Appreciate you joining us here on a Friday evening. So Manhattanville sends it around. And that one goes and gets close. So Martiganetti out of Wilmington, Mass. Trying to get involved there out of the Boston Junior Eagles. Still no time here. Colonels come out of the box. But Manhattanville circling around the net. Goes down on her own back there. Just kind of lost her edging there. And uh, now the puck is tied up and we get a whistle. Six now on the clock here in this first. Nice job defensively there. It was number 12 getting right there. Valerie Koenig, the five foot eight senior out of Arlington, Texas, saved the puck from getting over to Addie L. Olson. Now we're going to face off down here in the Colonel defensive zone. Live NCAA Women's Ice Hockey, Division Three, Manhattanville and Wilkes. 8.52 on the clock. Two-zero Manhattanville leads here in the first. Only five extra skaters here for the Colonels. In the meantime, Manhattanville has 10 extra skaters and a backup goalie. 
a little bit of an advantage here for Manhattanville. And again, a talented squad that leads Wilkes two to nothing. Colonel's still trying to establish a program here for Coach Earl Utter. Brought in some new talent this year and they're doing some positive things. Not necessarily measured by wins and losses, but by some play. And they did get a win this year, which is a positive here for the Colonels as well. Eight minutes and eight seconds here in the first as Manhattanville trying to attack here in the Colonel zone. Get it back over Drewer. Now here comes Miller. Miller lost the puck there. But Beckman right off the bench tries to come in and do a little damage in a circle there. And Miller still trying to control the puck. A Castro gets it plucked away there. And it'll be a circle back here as Nash does her job for Manhattanville. It'll go back behind Olsen. Hustling it and getting there to the cor corner first is Ava Panzer. Now behind the net and she flicks it up in the air. And now it's the Colonels just trying to get out of dodge here with 7.20 to go. Oh. Sent across and diving out for that puck is Addie Olsen stretching it out. And doing a good job here with 7.10 to go. 2 nothing Manhattanville. Olsen, that one almost went in. Trying to stay tight in goal over there. Koenig trying to play it over there. It'll come free. Koenig with a little bit of the business, and Manhattanville still has it alive right near Olsen. They go wide. Tried to stretch that through the back of the twine, but they went wide on that. Sent it across. Quick wrister saved over there. So good hustle by Gianna Manzi at Aston, Pennsylvania. Manzi played for the Flyers Tier 2. So circling around there is Grace Janis at a Wake Forest, North Carolina. That one will cycle around again. So here comes Nash, fast on her skates. Triple fives on the board here in the first. Two nothing Manhattanville. Every time Wilkes gets the puck, Manhattanville's there to harass. And again, a little bit more energy right now out of the fresh legs of Manhattanville. Koenig tries to get it out to her teammate, Abby Davis. Unable to do that, so it'll be taken over here by number 28, Abby Miller. Miller gets it out to Castro. Puck flies up in the air. I think it went in Ham's backside. She pulled the trick out, lost her glove, and her teammates are giving her the, the giggles there. <laughs> that puck got lost for about five seconds so cute little play 524 on the clock here with two nothing Manhattanville leading the Colonels of Wilkes University here comes Ham Ham between the legs and now we got a whistle So Abby Miller will head over to the box. So Earl Utter 
trying to debate the fact with Thompson. And Thompson will give his explanation and skate away. 5.13 on the clock. That shot high for Olsen. And then pitched back out. Exactly five minutes to play here in the first. Olsen trying to stay on it. Still alive as Olsen had all kind of skates and sticks and everything hitting her. But she did manage to stay on her feet. That one hits right off the noggin. This one almost goes in. Olsen over there. Great defense too. As number five is over there for the Colonels. Cuckrin. So a good job there by Wilkes. Trying to sacrifice all over the place on the penalty kill here. And that one goes around of Olsen, but goes to the back and hits the boards. Back, it'll come out to number three, Holly Meredith out of Sarasota Springs. Actually, that is Martignetti out of Wilmington, Mass, trying to do her part here. Number three, Manhattanville get a new skater. Ham will come back on the ice here. 52 seconds. Seems like a lifetime right now if you're the Colonels. It's just, let's get the puck out of dodge and try to get a new set of skaters out here for the Colonels. That one sent in. Flopped for a second in the air near Olsen. And the penalty is a killer for the Colonels, but the power play is golden as Marisha hits. Three to nothing. Well, the Colonels trail by three after one. We'll see what they could do. There's a first shot there for the Colonels as Manzi tried to take one in. Tried to get it over to Guzdick and then it was intercepted over there. And now the Colonels have to play going backwards. Here is Manhattanville comes down again. Tries to get Anna Titman involved there at a Salisbury, Connecticut. From the Colonels. Guzdick. Did she? Oh, man. Didn't have the puck on her stick, but had it right in that little corner where if that puck stuck to her stick, that would have went in right on the goalie as she tried to get it placed on Jules Austin. Just missed out on that. So it's still 3-0. There's 2.36 on the clock in the first. Manhattanville Miller tried to go five hole there, but Olsen able to close the gap. Now that puck's still alive back there in Curdle zone. That one blocked. One more time over there is Emma Guzdick. A lot of minutes here for the first year player. Guzdick sends it down, hits the Manhattanville goalie. And now Manhattanville trying to get a rush here. Castro has it. Castro gets it out. Still alive. Still right near the blue line. And then sent across over there for Claudia Cookrin. 1.42 on the clock. We got 128 to go, and this one's sent across. And then plucked up and back over to Koenig. So that one will come back here for Manhattanville, and they'll try another line. And now we got a whistle. 
You can see the look on the Colonel faces. <laughs> it's been a tough go here in the first period. As we get the face off right in front of the Colonel bench. It's actually four skaters. I didn't see Allison Jolly, the other keeper there. She's there, so. Not fully a full line change when you get it for the Colonels with only four other bodies going right now. But it is what it is right now. They're toughening out. They're out there competing and trying to compete here against the Manhattanville team that has a three-goal lead. Shot there. Does it go? The rebound. Does it make it? Now another possibility. That one tries to get in there, and Wilkes just can't seem to find a break as it bounces around a little bit. And a nice job there overall by Claudia Cookrin. Here comes a one-on-one. -on -one. That one towards Olsen, not going to make it. Seven seconds on the clock here. Comes across. It's still there in front of the net with 1.5 seconds and the buzzer. Welcome back to Wilkes University Colonel Hockey. Here as the women's team are trailing three to nothing as we start the second period. John Mandola with you here on the Wilkes University Athletic Network and the John Mandola Show Network. 1919 here on the clock to start. So Wilkes, just four skaters and their backup goalie, Jolly. Maybe tomorrow we'll get a couple players back for the Colonels. Ten extra skaters for Manhattanville this evening. And they've got a backup goalie as well. So they'll send one down deep here. Lurking here for the Colonels are Bungie. And they'll send that one down. Go! Oh! for the Colonels. That one went high. So Claudia Cuckren sent that thing down and it floated in the air. A beautiful goal for the Colonels and they get on the board 3-1. to one. So Emma Guzdick, part of that. Well, a nice job there by the Colonels to get one in as they went top shelf. That one goes high. And then this one kind of shuffled near the front. So here we got the face off down here. This one sent in, and this one goes wide. So the Colonels feeling a little better right now. Trailing 3-1, to one, but trying to get that offense moving, going down as Guzdick, but unable to get there as we get a quick line change here for the Colonels. Again, that fitness level will be challenged today here for the Colonels with just four extra skaters today and going three full periods. 
as Manhattanville with that advantage of fresh bodies. Castro now tries to send one down to the corner. Gets it over and able to, able to get there was Abby Davis. Sixteen twenty-eight on the clock. Earl Letter trying to chat a little bit there with the official. This one sent down, and now we got a whistle. Fifteen fifty-five on the clock here in the second. Here is Miller. No go. That was actually Dower, or Dewar, that is, came down there. And that little conversation <laughs> between Manhattanville and Wilkes, and they'll get the new lines out here. So nice job there by Sierra Dower, the freshman at a Winchester, Mass, Worcester. Worcester, that is Academy. Nash, talented, you betcha for Manhattanville with the puck and then gets it down in behind the net here. Now the Colonel's trying to just make something happen. Nice reaction there in goal by number 41, Addy Olson. And Olson able to do the job there. Well, we are in the second period here at the Toyota Sportsplex. We'll do it again tomorrow night at, tomorrow afternoon, that is, at 3.30. So if you're joining the Wilkes University Athletic Network tomorrow, we've got a couple of basketball games going on at 12 and 2, then women's ice hockey at 3.30. And on the John Mandola Show Network, it'll be a busy day as well with those two games, the ice hockey game and Dallas and Wilkesbury Area Wolfpack basketball in the evening. So busy, busy weekend here of athletics and just fortunate enough that there's some athletics going on. A lot of things have been getting shut down and so forth. So we're fortunate enough to be able to compete here for the Colonels in the Middle Atlantic Conference, 1444 on the clock. Puck goes behind the net. And now this will come out to number 18, Dower again. And then back over to number three, Mark Tignetti. That one can't get out of the zone right now. And then Koenig kind of towers over there, just trying to play some defense to get it out. And plays it off the board. Comes right in front of Manhattanville bench. Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer, that is. Annie Niedermeyer out of Alberta, Canada. A 
head over to the other side. That is Panzer. He's been involved a bunch here this evening for Manhattanville. 13.35 still on the clock. Trying to go down and make a couple of moves is Abby Davis at a mountaintop, Pennsylvania. That shot on goal there by the Colonels gets saved by Jules Austin. That puck will now float down here, and it'll be a nice race. As we'll get the face-off down here in the Colonel offensive zone. We're taking a break, coming over to get a blow is Abby Miller, number 28 out of Webster, New York, and Valerie Koenig will come in here to see what she could do. Maybe a quick win you'd like to see, and maybe Koenig could try to get a quick hitter at the top. Stick goes down there on Manhattanville and trying to keep it alive in the zone here for Wilkes to try to get an opportunity. Trailing 3-1. Three to one. This puck's still alive, but it'll be Manhattanville coming out of it. Once again, Marchignetti has been blazing fast here on her skates. And then this one goes behind. Koenig now has it. We're trying to get it out of the zone. She does just that. Gets it down into the Colonel zone, but it'll be Manhattanville right there. 12-27 here in the second period between Manhattanville and Wilt. Women's hockey, and that one goes across, and Olsen able to get her stick on it to just keep sending it across. Koenig will come back, circle back, and they'll get it back over. Tried to get it over to number 28, Abby Miller. Couldn't do so. This one sent towards Nash, and Nash will circle around here. Nash now trying to get, or that's Ham, trying to get a shot there, and Ham will end up sending this one up until the rafters. So a nice job and a good hustle by Taylor Ham to try to make something happen here. Well, that one floats away, and we'll get the change here for the Colonels at the 12.02 mark. Here's Wilkes now with an opportunity. Castro sends it across. Ham with it. Ham's going to get a breakaway here. Here comes Ham. Sends it across. And just a little too much sauce on that. And uh, we got to get reset the net. One sent down and then denied. 11 11 on the clock here. Colonels trying to make something happen here. 3 to 1. They got on the scoreboard. They're feeling good about that. And their hustle is up a little bit here in the second period, despite just having four extra skaters under the 11 minute mark now. John Mandola with you here on the Wilkes University Athletic Network. lost the puck now. That is Miller. Miller sends one. They get one. A shot right in the center there by number 20 for Startwood. Stanwood, that is. So Stanwood almost made it happen. 
She is a sophomore to West Vancouver, British Columbia. Colonel's trying to get that little thing going there, Rachel Morey, and then unable to do so. And now we get a whistle at the 10.04 mark. comes Miller and a goal right over Olsen what strength by number 27 Morgan Miller five foot six junior out of St. Augustine Florida Gilmore Academy tremendous strength to hold off the Wilkes defender and float that over the goalie The short-handed goal. Colonels. Nine twenty eight on the clock. Trying to work the puck up the ice here. Here's Castro. And now they'll send it into the zone with 8.55 to go. Here's Ham. Ham will pluck it down. Trying to get it to Olsen here as the Colonel's trying to get this power play working here. But Manhattanville's been tough this evening here at the Toyota Sportsplex. Ham, the big, strong young lady here that is wreaking havoc here on the Colonels. Stole that and got it into Colonel defensive zone. And Ham will go down and try to do what she does, which is just play big and strong. Manzi tried to get in there to interrupt, and the puck will circle around. And finally, the penalty kill is over here for Manhattanville. Miller with the puck. 7.51 on the clock. Nice job over there saving that was Addie Olson. That one goes high right in front of Olson. Good job there. Carrie Carr hit her right in the bread basket. She put the puck down on the ice and tried to see if she could shovel it past Olsen. Unable to do so. Still a 4-1 lead for Manhattanville.
Puck tied up. Koenig is down there. Manzi's over there. But Miller and number 22, Ava Panzer, right there as well. 7-16, that little float shot went right over the pads, but stopped right at her legs. Olsen. So the faceoff here in the Colonel defensive er, zone, and Ham will chase that one. So it's been all Manhattanville. They had a 13 to three differential in shots in the first period. The second period been pretty comparable. I mean, Wilkes did get on the scoreboard, which is fantastic. But Manhattanville continues to keep the pressure going. Again, Wilkes literally just outmanned, so to speak, with those limited amount of extra skaters today and a limited time to try to change lines. And Earl Utter's doing his best here with the Colonels that were able to suit up today, hoping to get a couple more tomorrow. Let's see what happens. Here comes the Colonels. Manzi gets Malachi crunched immediately over there as Barisha does a good job of coming over and getting that puck down low. That'll come down. Here is number three, Martignetti. She is a captain here with her squad from the Valiants of Manhattanville. Five fifty-seven now on the clock in the second. Koenig squeezes over there and does a good job of stopping that threat from Manhattanville. Nice job by Castro. That gets up ice. Mori now has it. Castro coming down. Castro got a stick on it, but it went wide. Now it'll come back over to the front. That is Cuckrin, who had a great puck in earlier to help get the Colonels on that scoreboard. Puck still alive here for Manhattanville. With well, the Colonels swarming, Olsen gets her glove down and her pad down to save that one. Coming behind her now. Got to get her head on that swivel. Here come the Colonels. Nice job there by Mori. Mori comes down, tries to see if anybody's home to send it across. Does, but only Manhattanville was there. Wasn't getting by number 20 there. That is Laney Nash. And that still alive and bounced around a little bit. Olsen does a good job to keep that out of the back of the twine. 4.34 on the clock. That one sent in. Here is Manhattanville. Sends it in. Nice save by Olsen. So a little ripper there by Hannah Beckman, a junior out of North Plainfield, New Jersey. But that stopped a little bit short. Here come the Colonels. 4-16. Nice job defensively as Miller ran right into Koenig. Koenig will do the job here getting that out. Three forty-eight here in the second. This one comes down and through. And here comes an opportunity here with Kerry Carr. Carr goes high, but Olsen able to get there. 321 left here in the second. Oh, 
Face-off one here by Manhattanville. They'll get it behind the net here. Send it around. It's Ham now with it. Ham will be checked over there by Coney. They come in high on Olsen. That gets stopped. And then Castro now has her stick on it. And they're swatting away there. And it gets out of the zone. Here's Castro still trying to get a beat on it. Castro beats two Manhattanville players. And this one across the way and didn't get it. And Maury tried to get it in. So a real nice strong play there by Castro. And they got to try to dig a little bit deeper to have a little bit more gas in the tank here. Here comes Ham. Ham with the wrister didn't go. Castro will be tested back there after being driven down the other way. 2.34 on the clock. This one comes across. Ham got to stick on it for a second. Then Nash. And now it's still alive in the front of the and five hole almost still there Olsen comes up with it so Felicio at a Holden Massachusetts and Koenig had a little stick off there if you will in front of the net and nothing wrong with a little physical play here as this thing is four to one Manhattanville the Valiants leading here at the Toyota Sportsplex John Mandola with you here this evening on the Wilshire University Athletic Network and the John Mandola Show Network thank our friends at McCarthy Tire Service 96 years they've been doing it here in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Thank them for their support. This one tied up, and then here comes Manhattanville. Olsen denies number 26, Stanwood. Koenig still, that is actually Manzi over there. Chasing Gianna Manzi. Koenig's kind of hanging out over there by Olsen to make sure nobody comes across the net. I'll get a little physical. Comes out of the zone. 124 to go. Here in the second period. This one's still alive and fumbling down and bodies all over the place. And then we get a whistle. And it appears like everybody is okay. We'll get down to 115 on the clock here this evening in the second period as the Colonels of Wilkes University trail Manhattanville 4-1. to one And we get the faceoff here in the de defensive zone for the Colonels. It'll be won by the Colonels. That'll be number 28, Abby Miller, with it. The Colonels have had a little difficulty getting it out of the zone. Just good stick skills here, and Olsen gobbles that up. As number 28, Abby Miller tried to make sure of that. The 5'2 junior out of Webster, New York, went to Rochester Edge as far as the previous team. So we've got 103 on the clock. We're going to close out this second period here very shortly and see if the Colonels can rebound and try to get going again. Here trickles down. And Koenig will try to get rid of it. Still stays in Manhattanville zone. Koenig will try to make sure of it for sure on this one as this one finally comes out. And Truer does just that again. Her stick on it with 45 seconds here on the clock. And the Colonels possibly get some offensive opportunities here. Here's a chance. Maury with it. Maury sends it back across. Hits off a skate. Still alive. And Castro trying to get it. Maury's right there. Still alive. It is Coming back over to Abby Davis. 26 seconds. Colonels digging a little deeper. They're tired. It's late in the second here. But here comes Miller. For Manhattanville. Carr right there, but is pickpocketed away. Still another chance here for Manhattanville with 10 seconds on the clock. Colonels get rid of it. I think they're going to be out of dodge here as they are. With two seconds to go. Period number three underway here. The Colonels trailing four to one, but playing tough here against Manhattanville. Appreciate you joining us here on the Wilkes University Athletic Network and the John Mandola Show Network. 
Colonels in Manhattanville again tomorrow at 3.30. We're looking at a face-off coming up here as Maury Drewer for Manhattanville. And this shot by Nash goes over to the corner. We'll try to get it over to Nash. Nash turned her head quickly. I took a little break. Here's Castro now. Gets it over to Maury, her teammate. Maury able to send it down. Drewer's pretty quick down that way. Miller. Or make it Abby Davis over there. We get Abby Davis wears 25, and Abby Miller wears 28 for the Colonel. Earl Utter, the head coach for the Colonels. Trying to keep his team as positive as they can be. A little shorthanded, but they're playing as gritty as you could get. They scored that goal there in the second period to give them a little life. They hustled the whole way through and continuing that effort here in period number three. That goes off the captain's pad, Tia Martignetti for Manhattanville. Here comes the rush, Morgan Miller. Miller tries to stop on a dime. It's kicked out the other way. Now the Colonels will see what they can do here at 18-10 in the third. Good step up there by Martignetti. They'll go down behind the Valiant bench. Joel Austin, Joel's Austin that is, is in goal for the Valiants. Now the puck right here, and both players lost it. Gianna Manzi was the closest player there for the Colonels. Nash, here comes Castro. Castro tried to make a quick move, but Nash poked her stick in there to stop that. That shot goes wide as Olsen got her stick on that. Niedermeyer, 17-17 on the clock. 4-1 to one advantage, Manhattanville. Castro. So the Toyota Sportsplex, a beautiful complex here on Cole Street in Wilkesbury. Probably about oh, 1.3 miles or so away from the campus of Wilkes University. So not far. And then of course we're oh, about two miles away from Interstate 81. So those players and students interested to maybe become a colonel one day very convenient and a great education at Wilkes University a lot to offer you have the river close by you got the Ralston Athletic Complex across the river Drewer just went through everybody except Olsen who made a big big save so great moves by Drewer but Olsen there to step up and stop anything that could have lit up that scoreboard. 16.45 on the clock. That one off. Olsen, that one again. Tried to pop up and go in. Ham was there. Now puck still alive. The Colonels now just trying to get their stick on the puck to get it out of that zone right now. And here comes number 24, Rachel Morey out of Buffalo, Wyoming. Morey being a pest like you'd like. That shot tried to get rifled in, but Manhattanville was right there. So a nice job there by Guzdick. Here comes Ham again. Ham with those stick skills. Ham trying to go backhanded. And the Colonel stepped right in front. So 
here's the face off here in the Colonel defensive zone and it goes down the other way hustling down is Abby Davis out of mountaintop and now it'll be the same thing back the other way so credit to the Colonels with 1542 but keeping their heads high and hustling everything right now and trying to compete here against Manhattanville trailing four to one in the third 330 start again tomorrow right here at the Toyota Sportsplex I'm sure Manhattanville will check into a hotel and make a day of it and an evening of it tonight and into tomorrow this one sent across no go Manzi it'll be Nash now she tries to get it and then coming over here comes Castro Castro's got a one on four Castro still tried to get something off crafty play there by Castro just to kind of tie up the puck which ended up becoming almost a one on five there at one point Maury Stanwood with a nice little sacrifice car battling over there and gets over to Olsen the goalie for the Colonels under 15 minutes to play here this evening that thing sent over to the side there by Jules Austin the goalie for Manhattanville so 41 shots for Manhattanville to just 7 for the Colonels so Olsen has done a really nice job in goal there's another save over to the side so Olsen again doing the job there getting a lot of heat no fans allowed here in the conference for the middle Atlantic conference and of course in general certain schools have their own rules and Wilkes University has adopted a no fans policy so they'll get back to having some fans in hopefully We'll get a little break in COVID at some point here. It's been tough sledding for a couple of years and different variants and all that other stuff. But nonetheless, we're wishing everybody good health here in 2022. Whether you're a Colonel or a Valiant fan. Thirteen thirty-one face off right in front of the Colonel bench. Good job defensively of picking that pocket. Abby Miller. Castro. Get a little bit of the business, but she'll still head down. Loves to scrum it up a little bit down there. And gets her stick going. Here comes Ham. Now it gets over to number 14. It is Hannah Beckman out of North Plainfield, New Jersey. Just under 13 minutes to go here in this contest. Poked away over there by number 19, Felicio. So Felicio tries to get a shot in there on Addy Olsen. Olsen sends it over to the side, and the puck's still alive here. So it'll be number 18, Emma Guzdick, the first-year player at Amherst, New York, 5'6". And we're going to get a penalty on the Colonels. As tripping will be the call as one of the Valiants hit the ice. So Guzdick will head in.
So the Colonels now on the penalty kill with 12 minutes and 4 seconds on the clock and 145 on that penalty kill. Open shot there. Olsen tries to get her stick on it. Does a great job in front of the net. Standing on her head and then smothers that one. So quick reflexes by the sophomore, Addie Olsen. 11.51 on the clock. comes Manhattanville. Skating down and the Colonels will send it down the other end here. 11.29 on the clock. Manhattanville tries to send one over. Manzi was chasing that. And now Miller will circle back here trying to get it over to her teammate. Artignetti. A nice job, they'll send it down behind the net here. On the power play for Manhattanville. Marchignetti, Niedermeyer sends across, nobody home, 36 seconds now. On the power play for Manhattanville. Ham gets in there and finally cleared there as Koenig sends it all the way down. Get a line change here for Manhattanville in for the Colonels. Get some fresh skates out there. Abby Davis now out there as well as Claudia Kukrin. Eight seconds here in the power play. Ham. That one goes off the stick. It'll get over into the corner. And the Colonels will send a body out there and nice job as we get yet another save 10 10 to go here in the third so the women and the men's team have locker rooms here at Wilkes at the Toyota Sportsplex been an investment here for the Wilkes University Colonels, but they've seen some great things. Student athletes from across North America have joined the Wilkes University ice hockey teams, and it's developed a culture here at Wilkes as well. So you get other athletic teams and other students and staff interested in ice hockey and that respect factor and then you get the colonels teams coming out to other athletic events and you get a young coach like brett riley over on the guy's side he goes to a division one school and then you get tyler hines who's done a real nice job and been here since the get-go with the colonels as well and it has the potential to be a special year over on the men's side. They just got on the other end of things at Cortland State the other, the other day. Cortland State's a pretty good team, that's for sure. And the Colonels were in a dogfight to fight back the whole way and eventually did and lost 4-3. to three. But there's still work to be done over on the men's team. In the meantime, for Earl Utter, this is all about development, getting some new players here and just trying to build a program here for the women's team. Nice skating there by Harris and stick skills are trying to get something to go and this one comes out. So Manhattanville right now has put a lot of pucks on the net for the Colonels but only four have gone in on Addie Olsen. She's faced probably close to 50 shots. 8.27 on the clock.
eight fourteen on the sheet. Penalty here on Manhattanville. Well, they'll send number 14, Hannah Beckman, in the penalty box. 7.56 to go here tonight. Sent across. <laughs> that thing had a little knuckleball to it, if you will, if there's such a thing with a puck. Colonels on this power play, setting the fast one across, unable to go. Castro tried to get that one in. Here comes again, Koenig. Going to try to eye it up. She'll get it over to her teammate. Back over to Koenig. That one redirected and then sailed through. And now we got a penalty coming up. Looks like a check. The so two of them now in there, and the Colonels have an opportunity in here with a little five on three hockey. Marchick Netty goes to the box. Big cross check. Colonels have a minute five here to work it. And they better get started here quickly. Take every advantage and every second you possibly could to try to make something happen with a five on three. We'll need to be careful. Here's Castro now with the puck. She'll be double teamed over there. Well, now she gets a little space. Now back over. Koenig ready to rip one here. Now comes back across from Miller. The Koenig couldn't, couldn't get it. Got to find it. She'll find it again. Hit it off of Miller's skates. And then they'll send it deep. So Olsen will come out to pluck that away. So Coach Utter saying we need one here. And they do. They fought hard. You have a five on three. You got to find a way to finish. Here comes Maury. Maury has a chance here. Maury goes right to glove side and gobbled up over there by Austin. The shot here for the Colonels goes high in the air, and that one wasn't able to come down either. Amanda Bungie almost able to settle that one and get it in. So now we're back to regular power play here for the Colonels. So the five on three hockey is done. 5.38 on the clock. Two skaters, literally, that was, that'd be a nice picture. Both of them just kind of hit each other and flew in the air. This one tied up here and then sent over. Here come the Colonels. So Claudia Cookrin out on that ice here for the Colonels. Five fourteen on the clock. Koenig got down to her knees to save that one because 
Manhattanville had a whole head of steam there, looking to make something else happen here. Leading four to one here late in this contest. Appreciate you joining us tonight here on the Wilkes University Athletic Network and the John Mandola Show Network. Castro. Four thirty-four on the clock. Colonels keep it on side. Send one down. Jules takes care of it. Four twenty now. So it's been a performance here from Manhattanville tonight. That's for sure. Leading four to one over the Colonels. Colonels have had some chances offensively, but mostly Manhattanville has had the opportunities with all those shots on goal. Colonels have hit double digits on their shots on goal, but it's been Manhattanville with more than 50 shots on goal here this evening, and trying to stand on her head is Olsen. Olsen right off the breadbasket there. Sent across. And that one just went a little wide. Great play there from number 23, Berisha. She's out of Mahopic, New York. Jola. And then saved once again by Olsen with 3.44 to go. Nine on the clock. Colonels now in the faceoff on their defensive zone. Come over Ham. Trying to use those stick skills to see if she can make something else happen. Castro now gets it. Here comes Castro. One on three. Sends it in. Tries to play the rebound. But didn't have a whole lot there. and Just tried to see if maybe something weird would happen if she sent it in and the power Puck would bounce around a little bit with 3.21 to go. And that one won by Manhattanville, that faceoff. Koenig keeps it alive. Castro off the player and then comes out. So Castro hits it off a car, and then it goes backwards over to number 27, Amanda Bungie. Three oh one on the clock, the faceoff coming once again here in front of the Colonel bench. One by Wilkes. Koenig now with it. Sends it across. Got Castro. Castro trying to get it into Manhattanville zone. And then it gets saved over there. So here it comes around the horn. And the Colonels will do their best. Here is Manhattanville. We're trying to keep playing defense. There's Abby Miller with 2.23 remaining here this evening. He'll play again tomorrow at 3.30. Manhattanville in town for the weekend affair. Be a lot of ice hockey here in the next 30 days as the Toyota Sportsplex will be really busy 
under two minutes to go here this evening. Here comes Beckman. Onto the ice and on cue right in front of Olsen, but somebody got a stick on hers, and she was unable to pull anything off. And that one poked out. Nash, it gets sent across. And that will come circle back in and then goes off of one of the players there and then comes back over towards Janest. 127 on the clock here. Nash gets rid of it. Beckham. Back over to the center as Morey tried to get something working there. Four to one, Manhattanville right now over the Colonels of Wilkes University at the Toyota Sports Flex. This will get behind the net. And now come back in front as Martignetti still right there. 43 seconds now. Thirty-four seconds. Colonels will try to regroup and be ready tomorrow. Hopefully with a little bit more players. We'll see how it goes for the ladies tomorrow. Of course, there's all type of testing here in the NCAA at all different levels and how it works. And Just hoping everybody the best and they can stay healthy. Eight seconds on the clock. So this is going to end a 4-1 to one game. It is Manhattanville victorious here against the Colonels tonight. They'll do it again tomorrow, 3.30, here at the Wilkes University Athletic Network. I'm John Mandola. Have a good evening, everybody.